Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I meet a hip-hop musician, R&B artist, singer, who actually lives here in Madison. Uh, He started out a couple years ago because his brother brought him into the studio and had him sing some stuff. Now, this is what I think is fascinating about it. He did this just a couple years ago and kind of got the musician bug, I think is the best way to put it. Uh, So he wanted to start doing more. He started recording, getting beats. We talk about like how he finds the beats that he uses and he sings on top of them and he doesn't have the equipment yet, but he is recording through software that he has through his headphones, which I find fascinating. He's like, I want to make music, so I'm going to start out making it, does it on his phone. And also he wants to, the thing that inspired him is that he is a blind artist. He actually is wanting to start a label of his own with other blind musicians. Uh, He goes by the name D-Ray Music, and he wants to start, he has a label that he's starting that he, he wants to feature other blind artists and other blind musicians and other blind entertainers and just kind of promote people and help them out in doing this type of stuff in creating music and creating art. So I thought that was really cool. We kind of, we were going to meet in person. This was, again, this was in Madison. And last time I did the interview in town here, I was having trouble with my studio. So I was only doing audio, still not really, I, the studio is still not up to par. So we ended up finally Uh, I had to schedule with them online. So we meet online um, and we talked just for a bit. It was great. It was a really nice meeting him. Super fantastic guy. And uh, I really enjoy his work. I'm I'm really excited about what he wants to do and how he's trying to do it. And he's just starting out and he's just looking to, he's just pushing forward and wants to do more. So here is my uh, interview with Jamal Moore of D-Ray Music. First of all, you're located in Madison. Whereabouts in Madison are you? I'm on the north side of Madison. You're on the north side? And then have you lived in Madison your whole life? Um, I wasn't born here, but I moved here in 96. So, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Oh, I was like in middle school. Yeah, I was in middle school, like sixth grade. Okay. Oh, yeah, wow. I was 12 when I moved here. Yep. Okay. So what did you end up moving here for? Was it just uh, like parents <clears throat> just moved here or like how? My, uh, my grandma, you know. When you're a kid, you know, your, your parents, your parents, people, family want a different chance for you. So we came up here through a friend and we liked it. Me and my brother liked it. And yeah. My grandma, we moved out here and we've been out here ever since. And then when did you start? Uh, when did you start making music? I started making music like when I was back in 2003. Yeah. You know, I really didn't take it serious, serious then, you know, but then I'm like, man, I got a, I got, I got a talent. I got to go. I, I got something I can use, you know, so. You know, I started linking up with different people and going to different studios. Then you know how it goes when you link up with different people. You know, you lose your music. So yeah. it's like you gotta start all over and you got to find the right person to link with, you know. And <clears throat> one day uh, I got a partner. His name Blind Thug. And uh, we linked up in like 2013. Okay. And, uh, man, shout out to Night Vision. That's the name of his record label, Night Vision. That's who gave me the idea to create No Sight Entertainment. Uh-huh. Blind Mafia Movement, man. That's my bro. But um, <clears throat> so we we started recording like 2013. We put an album out, you know. Um, it's out here on Spotify. It's called Blind Thug. So much flavor, and I took it real serious then. And I was like, you know what? Okay, this what I can do. This what I like doing. I'm gonna see if I can take it to the next level. Yeah. So I told myself like, okay, well if I got a, if I put an album out here with him, then I can do this by myself. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So 2019 came around. <clears throat> I made my first album. It's called Taking Notes, Volume One by D-Ray Music. I'm like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Let's see how this go. It went pretty good. You know, you get some people that like it, some people that don't. Right. But that's 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 the whole point of the industry. You know, that's how it is. But with me being totally blind, right? I look at it like this. Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder paid the Ray, right? Yeah. So, what what other blind artists that you know that's that's out here doing music besides you know Ray Charles, rest in peace. Uh, we know Stevie still got music out here, but yeah, what else artists is out here that's visually impaired that you know doing it? 
Nobody else, right? Not that I can think of off the top of my head, no. My point exactly. Yeah. So my whole thing is, I look at it being music is having doing this as a blind movement. Uh huh. I want to work with all visually impaired people. It don't matter if they's from Africa, wherever they from. Yeah. I want to work with them because I believe that everybody has some type of talent, whatever it is, you can work with me and we're going to figure it out. So when you started this, like what's the plan with it? And it, I, I have a few more questions going back on to how it got started <clears throat> to begin with too, but I'd like to know more about the, about the movement that you're talking about. Like what, what are your plans for it? How are you going to find some people to work with? I mean, it's all about it's all about promotion and, and telling people what you want and how you want to work with them. Yeah, you know, I wanna, I wanna, I'm a, I, I used to, um, I used to work for this place, Encore Studio, Encore Studios for the performing arts out here in Madison. Um, shout oh. out to Kelsey Shanghart. Um, that's my she, she, she played a big role model. You know, she helped me out in a lot of things. But I also want to take this into acting. You know, so I want to show other blind people. You know, if I can act, if I can sing, you know. Y'all, we can too. We can do this together. Mm -hmm. We can be on movies. We can do. We can do movies. We can do TV shows. We can everything that you know that sighted person do. We can do it too. We just gotta show people that we can do it because some people don't believe that we can. Mm -hmm. So if we show them, they're gonna be like, "Wow, man, that's they. They got talent. You would never think of nothing like that." I'm. I also want to know how you got into the studio to begin with. Like you said, you hooked up with the the other guy to record in the studio like what what prompted this first time that you went into the studio to record something did you already have some material did you create it in there well well what happened was one day he uh i was already in the studio with another friend of mine and um i was i was doing a song called strawberries and whipped cream you know i was helping him with his mixtape he was moving to atlanta yeah and my partner blind thug um, he he ended up coming up. He was like, "Hey, uh, D Ray, music man, we need to get in the studio." And we've been talking about getting the studio for a long time. And this particular time, he we got lucky and we ended up getting the studio. We did the song called "Strawberries and Whipped Cream," and he hopped on the song with me. And from there, we knew that you know we had chemistry. And then he turned me on to his producer that he had been working with for a while. You know, his name Jameson, he, and uh, hmm. he turned me on to him. And we started working. I was working with him, working with him. I kept working with him, my friend Blind Thug. And I just, you know, took it upon myself. It's like, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. So I took it upon myself. I, I got myself a, a iPad. I got a, I, I work on my iPhone. Okay. And that's how I record my music, you know, until I can afford to get to the studio. Okay. I was gonna ask you, I've seen some videos that you've done where you have your, your iPhone or your iPad headphones in and you're yep. recording some videos and doing some music over that. So is that how you've been producing it? Yes, sir. Okay, and where are you, so where are you making these like like the beats and the the other samples and everything that you have like where what are you creating that with? So what I do is I get different beats from different producers. Okay, you know um, that's that's what I do, and I buy different beats, and I try I put my music to it. Yeah, you know, and that's what I do. Do you play Do you play any other instruments or anything? No, I don't. But uh, my favorite instrument is if I can learn how to play it as a, a saxophone. Really? Yep. Oh man, I played saxophone for a little bit, but I don't know. It's <laughs> I I know too much what a good saxophone sounds like, so I can't really. T I could I didn't have the patience to listen to myself even play it. But uh, no, I'm I'm fascinated by the creating it on the iPad and the uh, the iPhone. Like, what kind of programs are you using to do that stuff? Um. One is called Hockey, Hockey 2. Hockey, it's like, it's some type of Asian app, you know, and I use Velaco or um, there's another app I use. It's called uh, uh, BandLab. Okay. I've seen some of the videos that you have says it's uh, it was made in BandLab, and I was trying to find out more about that. What is BandLab? It's an app that my son, you know, he told me about it, and I guess you can take pictures and I, I guess do all types of little I don't know, but you know, he told me about it. So I was like, "Well, he's gonna make me look nice and presentable and professional." Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, daddy, I got you, I got you. <laughs> so you had him do it for you. He's he's kind of like your uh, your PR guy. Man, so hey, somebody got to do it, right? <laughs> I can't see to do it. I know that you have an active YouTube channel, and you started out on that, I believe, if I saw in one of your bios. Like, when did when did you start putting your music on YouTube? 
So um, I started putting my music on YouTube back in 2019, August, I want to say 21st. Yeah. Um, I was I was I was going through some. I was like, man, I got to try to figure out how to get my music out here. Right. I felt like I was at a depressing moment, you know, and I felt like I didn't have nobody to help me to put me in the right direction. Uh-huh. So I I can't remember who I was to ask to make me a YouTube and they helped. They, they helped me make me a YouTube. And, and, and my YouTube has been going crazy ever since. Like me and my son just been posting videos and posting videos and posting videos and posting. I just been promoting and promoting and promoting like I should. Yeah. And like I said, that's that's the only way I know how to do it. So that's my meal ticket. Yeah. To let people know that, you know, just because that I am a blind, independent artist, that don't mean I can't accomplish everything like everybody else. Mm-hmm. You're starting this new. Uh, is, would you say that it's a label that you're starting, or it's, a, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's my own personal record label, No Sight Entertainment. Okay, and then uh, with that, like you're going to be putting out. Are you going to be just putting out digital, or are you going to be putting out uh, physical pieces of of music, or what are the plans for it? Um, my main goal is to focus on me and put more, you know, put more music out here with me, and um, hopefully sooner or later, you know, down the road and in the future, work with other artists. Okay. Yeah. And then, so are you still working with uh, the guy that you started out working with? Blind Thug. Oh, yeah. yes. Um, that's that's my big bro, man. Um, oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, that's my big bro. Um, we, oh, well, that helps. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's that's why we call ourselves the Blind Mafia, man, because we're moving. We're a unit. You yeah. Know? That's how we move. But yeah, that's we. I still work with him. Um, we're definitely trying to come out with a mixtape together. Um, he definitely support me, whatever it is I got going on. Do you have any plans now that everything's opened up? Do you have any plans to uh, play out in public or are you pretty much just kind of in the production stages right now? Um, I, I want to get, I want to hit the road. I don't, you know, that's my plan. I want to get out and perform and show people my showcase and show them what type of music I got. Yeah. Um, that's, that's one of my goals. If a person is like, Hey, can you come out here? Hey, we'll figure it out. But I most definitely will. Cause I, you know, even if it's around town, I don't mind doing it around here. You got to start somewhere, right? Of course. That is, yeah. I mean, <laughs> of course you do. You know, just start from the top. <laughs> oh, and so you said that you uh, you get beats from producers and things like that. Now, it, it, you do you get them on certain sites? I'm, I'm actually really curious. I never know where to look for beats or like uh, anything to use. Uh, so are there places you go to for it? Are there certain sites you go? I'd be curious to know, like, what would you say is the process for, like, let's say you came up with a song. You want to create it. You have an idea. Just anything like what's the process from start to finish on what you would do? Um, if it was me, like, I'd probably go to, like, YouTube or whatever, you know, to see if they got any free type beats. Because you got to, man, you got to, and plus you got to pay attention to if, if the beat is free, if it's not, because you don't want to go to jail. Right. You know, but, um Certain certain beats, you know, you can use for like mixtapes. You know, I have, you know, mm-hmm. but um, but like I said, you got to look for certain beats that's that's free. Um, like uh, you got to try to be in tune or look for different producers that really want to work with independent artists. You know, um, yeah, you just got to know, you know, the odds and ends and know how to go about it. How how do you search for those though? That's the thing. It's like I know I only just recently learned about the whole uh, people putting the beats and stuff like that on YouTube and being able to download those. But how are you searching for them? It's it's and also to know that you can use it or not. Like, is there a specific way to go about finding those things? Just because I'm fascinated by this whole subject. <laughs> um, you just you know you can type in free beats, free type beats. Okay. You know, uh, and and it'll pop like up different producers or whatever. Yeah. Um, that's it. Yeah, you got to type in that and hopefully it'll pop up, whatever it is you're looking for or what type of style you're looking for. If you're looking for R&B, hip-hop, or, you know, they, they got it. Yeah. And then, okay, so you've got the beat now. Like, what do you do once you've gotten that? Like, do you put it in uh, one of the programs that you'd mentioned before? You you mentioned a few I, that you started out. I, I didn't under, I, I didn't really comprehend because I've never heard of them before, aside from the band band lab yeah it was uh it's band lab i just work with band lab and uh this app called velaco what's that that's that's the one i didn't understand you said that and yeah, i was just like i still don't know what that is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a, um, another recording app that you can record your music on also okay so you bring that yeah. into there all right yeah yeah i do it, it depends what type of app i feel like working with um but or i just sit back and if i like the beat 
I sit back, come up with a nice little hook, mm-hmm. come up with a, come up with a, you know, come up with the verse or whatever, and go into record mode, man. I'll be ready. Yeah. What's the <laughs> What's usually the inspiration for, say, when you come up with lyrics? Like, I'm curious to know what what you would say the message that you try to get across is huh, when you're making stuff. Okay, so I got this one song I call um, Greatness, right? Uh huh. I think that song, that song right there, is gonna take me places. Now. Um, the reason I said it's going to take me places is because I lost my grandmother back in 2020. Okay. Right? October 29th. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, so, you know, my message is that my grandma, you know, she was my biggest fan. Okay. You know, so she supported me through, every, through all my ups and downs, no matter what it is, whatever it is, she was right there for that man you know you, you're destined for greatness you, you got to keep doing what you're doing so and that's what i'm doing that's my motivation that's my message i'm striving i'm gonna keep pushing as long as i can as long as i got the energy in my body i'm gonna keep doing what i do so your grandmother was kind of the inspiration to push you in that direction that was that was the thing that finally made you go i think i'm going to try and pursue this for real yeah Oh, wow. Would you say that that uh, is there that type of message behind the music that you're doing? Or do you co- like what other kind co- what what kind of subjects are you covering? I, I guess it, as as a, as someone who writes songs myself, I, I always have like this one place that I start out at. The song doesn't always end up going there. Like sometimes it changes. But like I do start out with trying to think of something that I remember from the past. And sometimes it'll go that way. Like, where where do you start when, like, what's your inspiration as far as when you're trying to uh, finish a song? When I, when I, when I try to, I, I think of like, when I finish, I'd be like, okay, man, is this, is this the way I want to go? Or how I'm going to go about it? Or I'm going to go about it with this? So it's like, it's all about how you end it and how you finish it. And I go off the end it because the, the way you end it, it's the motivation and it's the key. How many songs do you have right now? Oh, man, I <laughs> oh come on. <laughs> I okay, so I have an album. Like I say, taking notes. That's mm-hmm. on Spotify. Mm-hmm. I have an EP on Spotify, and I have a single on Spotify. And I have a lot of songs that I did on YouTube. I have a lot of songs on YouTube. Yeah, but I'm definitely I definitely got more coming. Yeah. Got more music coming. Yeah. Tell Definitely. me tell me about what you're working on right now. So, okay. So, um, I got this one song that I, I, I finally finished, but it's not out. <laughs> okay. It's, it's called I Lied and I Cheated, right? Uh-huh. So, everybody lies and everybody cheats, right? That's what every, I mean, that, I mean, I, I can't, well, some people. Right. Right. So <laughs> I guess we can't say everybody, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> Some people. So, I mean, I haven't I haven't released that song yet, but I know like once when when once I release it, it's gonna be like, oh man, what was the concept of that? Okay, well I lied and I cheated. Uh-huh. Okay, meaning when I say I lied and I cheated, then I'm telling you what I did. Right? Yeah. So this is what I did. Now it's up to you if if it's, it's if you if you choose to forgive me for what I did, but I make my songs like I make my songs about how how my life is or what I did. Okay. That's how that's how I go off my message and my music. I go off my life. Yeah, and that's what I do. So they're more they're more internal, definitely. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. It and that's that's the other thing is it's like are they some. T- I, some people write, you know, stories about situations, maybe even made up ones, or some people actually write about uh, what they've learned and what they've achieved or what they've done. And which clearly that's what you just said is it's, it, the song's <laughs> about what you've done. So, so you would say that's the method more that you do. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so when you're, when you're going about this, are you working on it as an album as a whole, or are you kind of doing a, doing it a song at a time? Um, I'm 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 doing it at one song at a time. Okay, it's the easier route to go. Definitely, I, I'll agree with that. <laughs> Rather than trying to orchestrate an entire album, make a bunch of stuff and see how well it fits together. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What what kind of uh, release date are you looking at on that? Um, probably sometime in 2022, man. Okay, you're looking at next year already. 
Yeah. I know. God, it takes so long, doesn't it? It, it do. It do. <laughs> <laughs> it do. Yeah. So people like us. Oh, so, uh, when you coming out with some more music? And you be like, well, I just dropped this and I just did this and I just did that. So, I mean, whatever I got playing next is going to take a while. Right. And this is all still uh, stuff that you're doing at home. Do you have any plans to go into the studio or are you going to be working on in any production places at all doing this? My goal is to get in somebody's studio. Right. What's what studios have you worked in again? I know that you started out with uh, um, with your brother. I worked, yeah, I started out, you know, with friends and family in the studio. That's how many started out, you know. Um, and then, like I said, my 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 big bro, Blind Thug, um, he had a producer named Jameson. Mm-hmm. Everybody know him. He's real big around town, making beats, you know. Um, but that's who I started up with him too. And that's how we made our album. Blind Thug, so much flag. With those that you have, you've been putting stuff out on Spotify. Um, what do you go through to, uh, like, what service are you using to get on Spotify? Because you can't just upload your your music there. You have to go through something. Shit, hell no. If it could, hey, I wish I could. Um, <laughs> I wish every, no, everybody but, wishes they could. <laughs> man, hey, but no. <laughs> no, but you, uh, I'm going through the uh, distro kid, man. Um, oh, you are? Yeah, and uh, you go through distro kid, man. They copyright everything for you. I mean, it's worth it, you know, $35. You can't beat it. It all works out, man. But Distro Kid is the best place to go if you ask me. Yeah. And then you also have an active uh, SoundCloud account, right? Yes, sir. D-Ray Music at SoundCloud.com. Oh, here's a question I wanted to ask. How did you come up with uh, the name D-Ray Music? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so um, I got a cousin, right? Yeah. And uh, we was, you know, I was outside singing or whatever. He was like, "Man, you, you, are, you, you just, you just can't stop singing. You just love to sing." He was like, "You know what, man? I'm just gonna call you D Red Music." I was like, "Why you gonna do that?" He was like, "Cause you just, you." Oh, he's like, "I don't know. That name just came to me, D Red Music, and you like music." So I was like, "Oh, okay, all right." And you know, I just took it and ran with it. So, okay. It was just the first thing off the top of his head. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, all right. I don't like it. It fit, you know? So right. That's, that's what everybody been calling me. That's what I got on my hat. That's my level, right? You know, yeah. So. No, I like it. It reminds me of a story. I had a friend who... Um, he, there was a guy who went around giving everybody nicknames and I had this friend who's, he, he was just like, I don't go by nicknames. And he's like, Oh, you will. And he kept trying to call him <laughs> things and he would be like, I'm going to call you this. And he's like, no, that's stupid. I'm not going to answer to that. <laughs> and then finally one day, like, like after a year of this guy, like going, coming up with these dumb nicknames that he was going to give him. And then finally one day he saw him walking down the hall and the guy yelled to him, he goes, Lucius. And he, tur- he turned around and looked and then he's like, that's what I'm going to call you. Because he answered to it. And it's just like, all right, you got me. You're right. I, I turned around and answered to the name <laughs> Lucius. So it was, it, so there was no rhyme or reason to him. Like, I thought his name was actually Lucius. And it wasn't. His name was like Eric or something. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just it was just because this guy decided to call him that. And having nicknames is always, like, my name is super boring. Uh, it's just the two first names. Like there's nothing to it. And there, and there are no good nicknames to make off of it. So I'm always fascinated when people have one and I'm just like, Oh, I never got to get one. Um, and also I noticed too, like when I looked you up online, um, it, it helps that you go by that because your actual name, there is actually a singer that has your name. That's very popular yeah, his online. Name is D Ray. His name is D Ray Garcia music. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I noticed that too. I'm like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you should reach out and see if you can collaborate on something. Man, for <laughs> real, I should. <laughs> Actually, you should. I mean, why not? You never know what's going to happen. Worst that's going to happen is he'll never answer. You know? <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Ha- have you reached out to many people after you started this? Like, uh, are there people or people that you're interested in reaching out to? Like, what are your methods for even just contacting people. I mean, you contacted me. So I know you're actively talking to people. So what are, what are some of the people you've talked to? Um, you know, I basically pretty much be like on clubhouse. Um, mm. it's this app called a green room. Um, my, my goal is to pretty much, you know, just get my name out there and let people know, you know what I'm doing and what type of show type, type of talent that I have. 
you know, and see where it takes me. Um, yeah. That's 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 my goal. Like I said, I'll be on Clubhouse promoting and promoting my... I haven't promoted my music yet, but i definitely be promoting my different sites that I'd be on. And I tell people, go, I don't follow me. Um, I got a, I got people from um, Kuwait. Um, I got some people from um, Africa. Um, I got, really? Yeah, I, I'm just... I just want people to support, you know, and... Uh, mm-hmm. So I knew about Clubhouse. I've never used it though. So I'm curious. It's nice. To, uh, you're actually one of the first people I've talked to that's actually used it. So now I got a few questions for you about that. <laughs> and also Greenhouse or Green Room, I believe it's called. Yeah. You yeah. mentioned that one too. That one just came out. That's the Spotify version of it. Correct. Correct. And uh, so when you when you go to use those, like what rooms are you going into? And, and seriously, what goes on in them? I don't, it, to me, it reminds me of those 1-900 chat lines where it used to be group <laughs> chat and everybody's just <laughs> talking at the same time. <laughs> You know, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> hey man, hey, 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 a lot goes on in the world. Right. But now, um, I, I, I mainly go to, I try to go to like, you know, rooms that have social media network, like, you know, people that do anything with music. Yeah. Um, but I interact with everybody, man. I don't, you know, I, I interact with everybody. Like, whatever room, I just go to any room and just, hey, post up. I'm D-Ray Music, man. Yeah. Support me, do this, do that. You know, I, that's what I do. And I, and I be up all night promoting, like, for real. Like, I be up. I go to sleep promoting. I wake up promoting. Like, yeah. Because somebody got to do it, you know? Somebody yeah. got to do it. So what, but what's an interaction like on there? That's what I'm saying. Like, I've never used it. I don't know, like, when you get on there, like, what happens when you join a room? Like, what do you just listen? Is it people already talking? Like, is it a presentation? I mean, like, how so, does it work? So, so, okay. So, like, when I go on great, I mean, uh, the clubhouse, I have a, I have some black friends that I know that be on there. Uh-huh. And so, you, you turn on your notifications or whatever. And, yeah. Uh, different people ping you in the room, different rooms. And you go in there, you talk to them. And y'all just have normal conversations. And you, you meet different people in different cities and different states, man. You'd be surprised the people that you meet. And the people that you that you interact with, like you might not right. know them, you know, face to face, but virtual, virtually, y'all know each other because y'all got some type of bond, man. Mm-hmm. Like, no matter how you look at it, it's like you gotta you gotta pick and choose, like how you pick and choose your friends in the streets. It's just like that. Okay. You, be on the apps, you gotta pick and choose who you want to be in your circle or who you want to be and who you want to have that 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 good vibe with yeah it's all about good vibe because you don't you don't want no negative energy yeah yeah and do you have people that are there people that you uh actually run into more than once when you go in there like especially if, if especially if you're frequent frequencing some of the uh freak frequencing is that the right word <laughs> yeah you know that frequenting there you uh, one of yeah, those I, when you I, go I, there I, a lot I, is what i'm trying to say <laughs> Hey, um, I, I run into some of everybody when I go in there, man. Like, it, it, it varies, you know. And, yeah. Uh, people be making all different types of clubhouses, man. Uh, like, uh, somebody may want to call, uh, 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 are you really blind? Uh, yeah, it's a, it was one called, are you, if you're really not blind, uh, call Social Security. And, uh, yeah, they, they, really? they, they <laughs> a weird name for a group where okay man yeah, you got you got one called the peanuts crew uh nice i like that yeah you, you have you be having you be having someone called hot topic sundays or hmm. you know uh family fun day uh like you said a one in 900 yeah they be having some of those topics on there too yeah uh, yeah you you'd be surprised like huh like i say it's all about who you who you all interact with, man. But it's fun, though. It's fun. Man. Yeah, it's. I've just been so curious about it, and I know and, uh, that it's there, and I still have yet to go. And I only just recently heard about the Green Room one. or it, That that just came out, actually, didn't it? Like, maybe a month ago. Yeah, I just found out about it, like, uh, mm, last month. Yeah, how different would that one be? Or is that one compared to... Now, that's, that's very difficult, because, like, it's not accessibility. It's not voice. It's not voice over accessibility. Oh, it's not. So, like, the only thing I can do is like follow people, oh, and okay. I can go and conversate with people. That's the only thing I can do. Now right. with Clubhouse, oh yeah, I'm a genius. I can whiz through that. Like, <laughs> hey, look at 
Like, why you listen? You, I was gonna move through itself. I was like, here he, he go. Oh, he was just in here. Yep, he gone now. Yeah. Yeah. He went somewhere else. Yeah. I, I, I stay active. I stay moving, man. Yeah. Okay. I mean, have you ever heard of a blind guy riding a bike? Have Have I? Yeah. I don't think so. Well, guess what? What? You have today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had my own personal bike as a kid, man. Did you? Yeah, man, it was it was a it was a little fast speed bike, man. It was, you know, it was just small enough for me. You know, couldn't nobody ride it because my uncle said can't nobody ride the bike but me. Yeah. All the other kids used to be mad because they couldn't get on my bike. <laughs> they were mad because they couldn't use I could get that, yeah. I love that you just brought up the bike thing. <laughs> I did see that there's a photo of you on a motorcycle. Oh no, nah, they should have let me drive that motorcycle, man. But um nah, They didn't? Um, no, nah, they should have though. But <laughs> no, <nah. laughs> That was my um when I stayed on the east side, man. My neighbor's name, Mr. Green. Yeah. And uh he was like, Yeah, man, go on here, get on the motorcycle, man. I got on the motorcycle, man. I was on there chilling, man. It was fun, it was nice, it was hot. You know, it was cool. It was it was nice. Yeah. I feel like a superstar. <laughs> nice. So what what are some of the plans? What are some things that you have coming up that you'd uh, like? Is there anything that you um, have coming up or projects or things you're doing that you would like to mention or like stuff that maybe I didn't even know about that you'd like to mention before we so, wrap up here today? So, um, like I say, man, I just want to get out and get on the road. Yeah. You know, and show music. But I have my own EIN, Right. Right. I'm just looking for somebody to help me put me in the right direction mm -hmm. to get this record label to where I need it to be. I know it's all types of scammers and everything out there, man, but I don't need none of that coming my way. You know? Yeah. I'm just looking for some real legit people, man. Yeah. That's all. Well, and what kind of research have you done as far as, uh, like, are there YouTube channels or uh, business people that you've been following? Like, who's... who? who has kind of led you in the right direction? I mean, getting an EIN is one step that's farther than what most people will do. I mean, most people just use their social security number. So, <laughs> what, you know, what are you, you know, you must be following somebody and learning some stuff. <laughs> Man, so what I basically got so far, uh, I'm starting to get my own website. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my goals is is to get the website up and running and start selling clothes and things of that nature, like with my record label and they log logos and stuff on there. That's one of my goals. I told myself I want to be in the music business. This is what I want. I want to be on somebody's podcast, magazine. So, hey, this is what I want. So this is what I'm striving for. Yeah. And if people wanted to check out some of your stuff, where do you suggest that they should go uh, listen to some of the music that you have? Man, they can go to my YouTube channel, D-Ray Music. Um, they can go check me out on Spotify. Um, they can check me out on iHeartRadio. Oh, okay. They wow. can check me out on SoundCloud. Apple Music. Apple Music. It's D-Ray Music Nation, baby. Come follow me, man. Support me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, and, and I, I can't wait to hear what you're doing more with the music and like uh, just producing stuff. I really enjoyed listening to your music. I was glad that you reached out to me. Like it was really cool listening to your stuff Man, and just listen, hearing new I'm, music. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you reached out to me, my brother.